Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hitherto been so gracious, so merciful in that we do something very small in our limited perception, but we get abundant rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no any way that we can despise an act of worship, which we do for the purpose of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated a lot of small acts that don't require from us a lot of efforts, but if we do them out of sincerity and with efficacy, Allah subhanahu Wa ta'ala will reward us abundantly. So today we will focus on these small acts that do not require any effort from us. But if we do them for the sole purpose of seeking Allah's, Allah's pleasure, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for them. In a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-imanu bid'un wa sab'una shu'ba, a'alaha qawlu la ilaha illa Allah, wa adnaha imatatu al-adha ani al-tariq, wa al-hayau shu'batun min al-iman, rawahu Muslim. In a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iman is divided into 70 and more branches. The highest of all these branches is to say La ilaha illallah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Afdalu ma qultuhu ana wa nabiyuna min qabli La ilaha illallah. The best statement that I have ever said and those prophets and messengers who came before me is to say La ilaha illallah. This is the best statement that every Muslim can say. So if you try your best to say it as many times as you can, you get a lot of rewards from Allah subhanahu as it is at the peak of the divisions of faith and the last the the uh, what is at the bottom of the branches of faith is you are walking along a road along a path you find a broken glass you find a stone anything that you perceive that will harm someone you pick it and dump it away where it will not harm anyone this is an act of worship although according to this hadith it's at the bottom of the branches of faith if you do it sincerity sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you get a lot of rewards in a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu qal qala rasul الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقد رأيت رجلا يتقلب في الجنة في شجرة قطعها من ظهر الطريق كانت تؤذي المسلمين. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says he saw in a dream and of course all of us know that dreams of prophets and messengers are true. So he saw a man was enjoying the bliss of paradise and what was the major reason for him to go to paradise? It's because one day he was walking on a path he found a tree he perceived that this tree would harm some people, he cut it and threw it away where it won't harm anyone, he was rewarded for that. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that a man was forgiven all his sins because while he was walking on a path, he saw a, th a, a branch of thorns, he took it and threw it off, he dumped it somewhere where it won't harm anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciated this gracious act, he forgave him and took him to paradise. So as simple as that, you find someone broken, someone that would harm someone on the path or on the road, you pick it, dump it somewhere where it will not harm anyone, you are rewarded abundantly. And this may be a reason for you to go to paradise to enjoy the bliss according to a lot of sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Conversely, if you dump something on the road where it will harm humans, animals, and it will, it will contribute to the pollution of the environment, you are a sinner. It may be a paper, it may be something, but you don't have to throw something. Unfortunately, in many places, we find some people driving. While driving, they dump something out of the window. They don't know whether it will harm someone or not. They don't care. This is un-Islamic. And some scholars say that such a person who does this is inclusive in the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا 
فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا Those who harm believing men and women undeservedly, they have taken to themselves a calumny and a glaring sin. In other words, if you do something that will harm someone, whether a human being or an animal, you are committing a sin and you will be responsible for that. So we have to make sure that we keep our enviro environment clean. We don't do something that will harm human beings or animals. We, s we stick to the teachings of Islam, which are in the benefit of humanity and animals. Brothers and sisters in Islam, sometimes people want to compete, especially Muslims want to compete against one another. And sometimes if someone is richer than you, you think that there is no way to compete with him because he does something extra which you do not do. So some people end up in despairing that there is no way I can compete with this person. He is rich, I am poor. Whatever I do, he does it and he does more than that because he is rich. So he will have a special status in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to this. It was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that poor people came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They complained. They said, Ya Rasulallah, Zahaba ahlu duthuri bil ujur, yusalluna kama nusalli, wa yasumuna kama nasum, wa yatasaddaquna bi fuduli amwalihim. Faqala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awa laysa qad ja'ala Allahu lakum ma tasaddaquna bihi, fa inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqa, wa kulli takbiratin sadaqa, wa كل تهليلة صدقة وكل تحميدة صدقة وأمر بالمعروف صدقة ونهي عن المنكر صدقة وفي بضع أحدكم صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله أيأتي أحدنا شهوته ويكون له أجر قال أرأيتم لو, أرأيتم لو وضعها في حرام أكان عليه وزر فكذلك إذا وضعها في الحلال كان له أجر in a long hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us some simple acts according to our perception. But if we do them, we get a lot of rewards. So what does it say? Poor people came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were really religious. They wanted to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wanted to compete with each other to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally to go to paradise. So they complained to the Prophet. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Rich people have already taken everything from us. They pray as we pray, they fast as we fast. On top of that, they give charity in the surplus income that they have, which we can't afford. Because they are rich, they give zakah, they give sadaqah, and we can't afford to do that. So this means they have taken all the rewards from us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked them, hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for you some acts which you don't have to pay money to do? He says, فَإِنَّ بِكُلِّ تَسْبِيحَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ Every time you extol Allah, you say, Subhanallah, you are rewarded as though you gave sadaqah, charity. وَإِنَّ بِكُلِّ وَبِكُلِّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ Every time you say, Allahu Akbar, you are rewarded as though you've given charity. Every time you say, La ilaha illallah, you are rewarded as though you gave charity. Every time you say, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, you praise Allah, you get charity. So you don't, you don't need to pay money to say Allahu Akbar. You don't need to pay money to say Subhanallah. You don't need to pay money to say La ilaha illallah. So all these are acts, statements that if you say that come from your heart, you believe in them, you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you repeat them, you get rewards as though you have been, you have been giving charity. And he continued, وَأَمْرٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةً If you enjoin people to do good and forbid them from doing bad in the most effective way, I insist in the most effective way. The issue here is not to say it or to, um, to command people, to enjoin people. The issue is how do you do it? Because the way you do it may make that person continue obstinately, obstinately to commit a sin because you, dis you disrespected him. So if you want to enjoin people to do good and forbid them from doing evil, you have to learn the methods of doing that because the issue is not to apply it, to do it. The issue is will they listen to it? 
it? Will, they, will, will it be efficient if you do it? So if you do it in the most efficient way, you are, reward, you are rewarded as though you gave charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala says that enjoining good and forbidding evil is the best act of all the acts because this is the criterion by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this ummah the best of other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. You've been the best people evolved for mankind to enjoy good and forbid evil. So if you do that, you are the best of mankind. But you have to do it in a proper way. So wa amrun bil ma'rufi sadaqa wa nahyun anil munkar and to enjoy conjugal rights with your spouse is an act of worship. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said this, his companions were surprised. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, can anyone of us satisfy his carnal desires and get the words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, what if he satisfied his carnal desires illicitly? Would it be a sin on him? They said, of course it's a sin. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, likewise if it's a sin to satisfy your carnal desires illicitly, you get the words if you do it in a proper way according to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a lesson to us that we should always apply a stick and a carrot method in whatever we do. Whether we are dealing with our children at home, whether we are teachers at schools, whether we are employers, when someone does something good, we have to reward him in as much as we will blame him or punish him when he does something wrong that will, uh, will harm the reputation of the company or the school or whatever, we have to reward him when he does something good. Unfortunately, most Muslims, when you do a mistake, they are ready to punish you, but when you do something good, they don't recognize it. This is one of the teachings of, of Islam, that when someone does something good, we have to recognize it and we have to reward him for that, and when he does something wrong, there is punishment, but we have to look into the circumstances. Why did he do it? In which circumstances, uh, circumstances did he do it? And we put that into consideration. So, as you can see, you don't need to pay money to enjoy conjugal rights with your spouse. You don't need to pay money to say, La ilaha illallah. So, we have a lot of chances in which we can still earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we are poor. Brothers and sisters in Islam, there are many acts that we are not aware of, that if we do, we get a lot of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala adullukum ala mayamhu allahu bihi al-khataya wa yarfa'u bihi al-darajat, qalu bala ya Rasulullah, qal, isbaghu al-wudu'i ala al-makarih wa kathratu al-khuta ila al-masajid wa antidharu al-salaa ila al-salaa fathalikum al-ribaat. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, encouraging his companions. So he asked them, would you like me to tell you things that if you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe out your sins and give you a lot of rewards? They said, tell us, O oh messenger of Allah, we are ready to listen. He said, first of all, to perform wudu, ablutions, which is conveniently translated as ablutions, but it's more than that. So you perform wudu before prayer, no matter whether the weather is cold or the water is cold, but you still do it the way you have to do it. Now, this does not mean that if the weather is so cold in which if you perform wudu with cold water, it will harm yourself, don't do it. If it harms yourself, don't do it. But if it can't harm yourself, it's preferable that you perform wudu with water as we usually do it. So if you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe your sins. And in many a hadith, when you wash your hands, when you're performing wudu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes the sins that you committed by your hands. When you wash your face, every part of your body that you pass water on it before you go to pray, you are forgiven the sins. So the hadith continues, وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُطْوَةِ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ And to make sure you walk, to go and pray. And this again does not mean that if you live in Fahail, you want to come to Kuwait City, you have to walk all the way from Fahail to Kuwait City. It means that you go to a mosque in your local, in your locality, but make sure you walk. First of all, according to hadith, when you walk to go and pray, the one step Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe out your sins, the other step he will give you rewards.